I'm here to settle a debate. With the rise of hustle culture, there has been a rising number of ways to make money on the side in this insanely fast society we live in. Whether it's for driving for delivery apps, drop shipping, literally just scamming people, people have come up with new and inventive ways to get their bread. However, there is one method that is always sourced as the easiest and fastest way to make a lot of money. You can get a six-figure job drawing animals She's good at making fursuits. Fursuit makers allegedly make 30k a month. Have her making fursuits. What is widely believed to be an insanely fast and easy way to get money is to open up furry commissions. But what even is a furry? I'm, if you don't know, thanks for clicking on this video. <laughs> a furry is a more broad term for someone who likes anthropomorphic characters. In this context, anthropomorphic characters are when you take an animal and give them human characteristics. Famous examples of this context are Lola Bunny from Space Jam, Judy Hopps from Zootopia, uh, the Robin Hood where he's a fox, um, whatever the hell that Dilf Gantu was in Lilo and Stitch, the list goes on. Now, the furry community is a community that has been subject to a lot of criticism and vitriol from various corners of the internet and in real life for many different reasons. But one thing that most people who don't like furries will point out is the sheer quantity over quality approach that some of the artists take. Whether it's insanely high quality images that make you appreciate the miracle of sight or works that look like a leaked Chris Chan drawing, there are hundreds of furry commissions being done every single day and people are paying absolute bank for them. Highly skilled artists who have influence and great back catalog typically charge anywhere from $100, $200, some artists even charging over $500 for one of their pieces. This has led to people broadly assuming that furries will pay for literally anything. To help this argument, there's one person infamous in the furry community who has apparently spent upwards of $100,000 on images of the Star Fox characters Fox and Falco being 100 feet tall and doing the stinky leg on some buildings. Please don't Google it. <laughs> And while people will say the furries will buy anything comments are just jokes, people still assume it's true because of stories like that. However, when talking about that to my friends who are furry artists or just furries in general, I've learned that some of them hate that sentiment. Some have gone into a whole tirade about how furries won't just buy anything. You have to have the actual quality in your art. You have to actually want to draw it. You can't just half-ass it. And for that reason, the community can sniff out a poser. So it's like the metal community, but with fur. Some of them have told me that furries want to commission artists with a big online presence. So if you don't have that presence, it's not that easy to get a commission as a new artist. So I've heard this debate raging on for years. I keep seeing the sentiment on my timeline for and against it, and I've decided I've had enough of it. So today, April 5th, 2024, I'm going to finally answer the question, how much money can you make off furry art? So to truly answer this question, I can't half-ass this. I need to fully dedicate myself to the craft so I'm going to be learning how to draw furry art. In fact, I'm going to be learning how to draw art in general because I cannot draw. Sounds easy enough, right? Now to set up the parameters of this experiment, I will have two months to prepare my art skills and then two months to post my art to the world and try to get as many commissions as I possibly can. Now, like in my PNG tuber video, which you should watch if you haven't, I have completion goals for this experiment too. To succeed at this experiment, I must complete at least one of the following goals. One, get at least one commission. Two, get my pages to at least 100 followers. Three, get at least one post to 100 likes or retweets. And four, death threats. It, yes, it's death threats are a very common way to win this experiment, trust me. Now, full transparency, I did this experiment last year in 2023, but hopefully it should go well. So for posting, I'm gonna start in the month of July, 2023 on a brand new Twitter account as Twitter is the social media I personally use the most often. Plus I have personally seen success stories on there very frequently, even with the transfer of power over to Elon. So now that I'm gonna start doing this experiment, where do I even start with learning how to draw furry art? I have no clue. Better yet, how and why do people even start drawing this stuff? Is it for the money? Is it for the love of art? Is it for a third thing that I cannot say without getting demonetized? I do not know. Now, I can't answer this without some field research, so I contacted five different furry artists to ask them all these questions. Starting out with, how did they get into furry art and how long have they been doing it? I really never had like a knack for art or anything until lockdown, drawing random characters and whatnot. I have friends who make furry furries, so like I just started drawing their characters and stuff and then like two years later here i am when i was a kid i was watching for example this cartoon i was like sorry the hedgehog i started drawing a bit uh, of those characters like and then i watched the movie for example uh, of space jam i think many people know that movie basically for for many of us an introduction <laughs> into this world. Well, I started drawing about 10 years ago. I started drawing wolves and foxes, but I didn't know that was 
furry art until three, two years ago. And a friend introduced me to furry fandom. And I was, it's a furry. <laughs> and he showed me people doing furry art. And I, I was like, wow. That was a whole world out there. And I didn't know. I've always been like doing doodles myself, um, even as like just stick figure comics. I just saw a lot of um, reptilian characters and I thought, I like those designs. And I started doodling them myself and then ended up sharing art with my friends, got a small tablet, digital art. They bullied me to making a Twitter, which is hellhole as we know. So that was about three years ago and I joined Twitter, but about six years ago when I started doing like personal doodles. Well, when I got into furry art, I think it was like eight years ago. I started doing like anime art style, but then when I got to the and I started to look, uh, to find those artists that were like doing this, like furry art style. And I just, I don't know, I just, I just thought it was like fun to do. And that's when I started doing it. I then wanted to ask why they started doing commissions to see what the average time frame was. Some said they did it from the beginning. Some said they were pressured into it by their friends. And some said they have done it as a way to help make some extra money. I also asked for their process of doing a commission, which tended to be roughly the same for everyone. Making a post about it, talking through DMs, setting up a PayPal, and then communicating with their commissioners. With all these lovely people giving me their time, I was gaining insider knowledge on timelines, deadlines, how to handle talking to clients. I also wanted to ask for their advice to any new artist out there. I'd say just draw what makes you happy, just because if you try to strive for improvement, like just immediately, you're gonna be upset. All references. It helped me a lot. Tough, good business practices. <laughs> like if people start to notice that you just don't deliver, or just not communicate at all, they will stop uh, commissioning you. Don't be afraid to use references. That's that's a big one. Don't be afraid to draw heavily from other artists as you're learning and developing. It's um, a very important part of the process to finding yourself there. It was lovely hearing those words, especially because the people saying them did not know they were giving those words of encouragement to the crazy man interviewing them. And then came the most important question. How much money have they made from doing furry art? I stress that they did not have to disclose if they weren't comfortable, but not a soul withheld this information from me. From around like seven commissions, three hundred, four hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, five thousand US, like over the past three years. But monthly, roughly, like oh no, two k. I think like it's the least, it's the less that I have made. It's two k monthly. Mo monthly. Yeah, monthly. What the f- So now that the bar has been set unrealistically high on the money expectations for this experiment, it's time to actually get to working on my art. By the way, the links of everyone I spoke to will be in the description. So go and support these people. They're really talented, have a lot of great art, very nice people. To all the people I talked to, thank you for providing me with your time. And now it's time to see the fucking monster you created. <laughs> So the start of May was a pivotal moment for my journey into the furry community as I had to determine which specific species I was gonna pander to. Now, if you don't know anything about the specifics of furries, hi mom, here's a brief history lesson. Most furries have what they call a fursona. This is a specific character, mainly a specific animal that either relates to your interest or connects with you on a deep emotional level. Some furries use their fursona as a way of escaping the constant monotony and frankly, the constant struggles of everyday life. Now, there are a ton of different animals you can choose to be your fursona, specifically the specific species you hyper fixate on, but for the sake of brevity, I'm going to narrow it down to three main categories. Furries! These are your wolves, felines, bunnies. These sonas are incredibly popular and very common in commissions. Skillies! These are your reptiles, lizards, crocodiles. We're getting a tiny bit less common here, but that means there could be less competition. Miscellaneous! Miscellaneous. These are your fish, your birds, slugs. That last one's probably not real, but I hope it is. So there are pros and cons to all of these, but I could not decide my focus yet as I had a bigger problem on my hands. Anatomy. So at the start of May, I called up my good friend Sorexa and had them teach me a basic anatomy lesson. Just full disclosure that I'm not a furry artist. Were you going for like air quote realistic kind of style or like are we going like with chibis? I'm gonna aim for realistic because I think that makes whatever I make funnier. In this lesson, I had to decide which angle to take. And after a long deliberation, because I feel like while well, we could hit we as if you're gonna be drawing it with me. We, I'm part of the marketing team, guys. <laughs> I decided to focus on scalies. I did this as I think the market would be a little less competitive due to there probably being less scaly seeking out commissions than furries. I cannot believe those are real words I said, but it's time to learn. I can't imagine trying to lug around a fucking like four pound tail. 
It would be much more than four pounds. After the anatomy lesson I got, I had everything I needed to start my journey to become the best furry artist ever known to man, which means I'm going to be making so much money. <laughs> Speaking of money, it's editing Tony here, by the way. Uh, not only do I have an upload schedule now, but also I'm starting a coffee. If you don't know what coffee is, it's kind of like Patreon. Uh, so for five bucks a month, you get some extra content. You can help me in the research segments of these longer videos. And you also get your name at the end of the video. There's also an option, just a tip if that works better for you financially, which I'd appreciate, but no hassle. Anyways, back to me learning how to draw scalies. <laughs> So for the rest of May, I started taking 30 minutes each day to watch a different tutorial and to utilize that said tutorial in my sketchbook. Mapping it out physically, getting acclimated to the feeling of my hands creating the next Mona Lisa. So taking the entirety of May to learn was my plan until I had like five different finals at college, so I had to push the learning back another month. Which I think was for the best because my art was, to put it nicely, fucking dog shit. I quickly learned that me drawing as like a baby deer trying to stand for the first time, I want it to work and it just isn't. So at the start of June, I got back in contact with Dova, Feathered Snake on Twitter, and asked if he would be down to help me with teaching me more specifics about furry art. And luckily, he said yes. On top of the art exercises I was already doing, Dova started sharing with me reference sheets, websites, images, even going over why certain things I was doing wasn't working. So your semicircle is too tall? God damn it, fuck this fucking thing. Fuck my life, fuck America. This was great as I had kept practicing in my sketchbook, meaning that I was having good progress that could actually be seen. I mean, it's still not good, but it's still better than where I started. I also took it upon myself to truly experience and understand the struggles of furry artists, because you're telling me I have to understand both human anatomy and animal anatomy at the same time? They are two separate things. How am I supposed to take this goober and give him muscles? Although my progress was clearly improving, I started to experience something I didn't know how to explain. I was looking at my stuff and people were saying I was getting better, but I was looking at it and no, I wasn't. This, this is dog shit. They're just saying that because they're my friends. This looks atrocious. I'm just copying what I see. No wonder they like that one. I'm so alone in this feeling. Not a single soul has ever experienced this before in their lives. Hey, look over there. It's Kevin explaining the definition of imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is when people believe that they are undeserving of their achievements and the high esteem in which they are generally held. They also think people think they are way smarter than they are. And no, this is not an Among Us thing. It's a mindset thing. Thanks, Kevin. I didn't know you could finally read. Thanks, Tony. It only took me two hours. Thanks, Kevin. In fact, imposter syndrome was something some of the artists brought up when I talked to them. It's something that nearly every artist experiences regardless of their field. In fact, I've actually experienced it myself before. If you let me vent for a little bit, I've been making and releasing music since 2013 when I was 10 years old. Jesus Christ. To summarize how my imposter syndrome formed, uh, it made it so if I ever tried to post or share my own music, it made me physically ill. I felt like I was gonna vomit everywhere. This affected me so bad Badly that I literally had to step away from everything music related for a full year, which is actually why we're here today. I started dedicating myself instead of to music to YouTube really hard in 2020 a year I did not anticipate in having as much free time as I did. I'm luckily in a much better place now since I used that struggle to make my debut album Affilion in 2022, an album that placed me on a Rate Your Music playlist under the name YouTubers Who Think They Can Make Music, which is cool. In short, I've seen how imposter syndrome formulates and I've found a way to combat it myself firsthand. From this point on, I kept going, suffocating the imposter syndrome by drawing whatever this thing is. Seriously, I keep drawing this thing, I think it's a lizard. If he's gonna stick around, I probably should give him a name though, right? Something that expresses his pure power. Something that screams fear. Something that will be remembered for years to come. His name is Brian the Lizard. <laughs> Brian the Lizard felt like an old friend I've always had, even though he had been just born into this world this month. I kept drawing him in as many poses as I could to get adjusted to learn my strengths and weaknesses and be able to work with any potential pose that a commissioner could throw at me. I continued to work on my anatomy and eventually tackled every artist's favorite thing to draw hands. I first drew what I originally pictured hands to be, and they look fun. I then watched a video on how to draw hands and looked at some references and was able to create this page. The improvement is immediately noticeable here, and I may have been able to get better at hands if I continued to focus severely on them, which I admittedly did not. However, what I did focus on was the bust image, an image that specifically features a character's head and neck as profile picture commissions are fairly common, and I'd be able to focus my work on two different things, rather than spreading it out to every single aspect of the human body. So my main practice is here were to make sure that the head and neck looked normal, but anything else was an added bonus. Anyways, time was rapidly approaching for me to start this experiment, so I wanted to show off some of my artwork to someone before I officially transitioned to digital art. So I showed off my art to my friend, Lindsay, and got their advice. That's actually horrible. This is definitely a very good start. I don't know what's going on with that. I think that <laughs> is that's the experiment. I don't, I don't know, is that Darth Vader? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Darth Vader. I did not realize the appropriate, like, anatomy thing. Like, that's like, those are birthing nips. <laughs> 
<laughs> Any character you draw is being birthed through through this, these hips right here. Yeah, those hips. You fit so many kish missions through there. <laughs> After showing off my art to the outside world and spending the last few days getting some final drawing reps in, it had officially turned to July, which meant it was officially July. It also meant this experiment has finally started. Now, since it is July and I have just started my account, I wanted it to seem believable that I would have just started a brand new account. What's my name gonna be? It should be something silly. Lizard in Welsh is Madfall, which is crazy. Um, Musker. It's, I think it's Musker. <laughs> Brian Musker. So I came up with the backstory that my previous one was hacked, and this was me starting fresh again. I also threw in some fun personality bits there to get people to like me immediately. I feel like Brian's really into astrology and inspirational quotes. You know he's a Pisces and a Cancer, and he's Sagittarius. Pisces for life. I also made a tweet covering my ass and tried posting some memes to get in the algorithm and to make my account look more real. Now that didn't do any anything for my account, but I was working on something that would, transitioning from traditional art to digital art. Now when I had brought this video idea up to some of my friends at the time, and I told them that I was going to be switching to digital art right as the experiment started, some of them laughed at me. <laughs> Why is that? I'm just drawing again, right? Well, the problem is with drawing digitally over physically is that there is a huge culture shock going from being able to draw physically anywhere you want in a sketchbook to being restricted to this tiny square equating for your entire screen. I'm sure the artists out there watching can relate, but uh, for those who don't don't know, I cannot properly explain how confusing this is until you try it for yourself. The best comparison I could think of is it's like getting used to a normal computer keyboard, but then you got moved to a stenographer keyboard, which is like Guitar Hero, but for courtrooms. Anyways, I finally got Credo working and I felt like I had just picked up a pencil for the first time in my entire life. Muscle memory doesn't fully apply here as you have to morph your drawing style to whatever size tablet you have, which isn't annoying in the slightest. However, the good news with Krita is that it was finally able to color my art. This was a fun one thing I had not done before in my practice months, mainly because I feel more confident working with color on the computer because I have a point of reference to see what the color I'm using actually looks like. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but I'm colorblind. I'm protonopia colorblind, which basically means I can see colors, but I see them fuckers wrong. If I had a dollar for every time I told someone I was colorblind and then someone pointed immediately to grass and asked me if I knew what color it was, I would have more money than all the furry artists I talked to combined. Anyways, after spending an hour drawing a few poses and finally settling on one, I needed to give Brian the Lizard some color. So I got to coloring and when I was finally done, I finally had a piece that I was relatively proud of. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'd put that one on the fridge. So I posted poor Brian to Twitter using some popular and relevant hashtags, and I waited for the engagement to roll in. Of course, it didn't immediately roll in, so I kept drawing some more so I'd have a backlog of art that I could post throughout the week to make me look more productive than I actually was. I decided to focus some more on bust images since that's where I think the money's really gonna come rolling in for. So I decided to do exactly that. I utilized all my skills I had garnered from my practice and the advice of my mentors, especially gaining this smiley mouth thing that I started to add on every image. When I was done with this image for the first time, I was proud, but looking at it again in April, <laughs> I'm even prouder. <laughs> Mind you, this also didn't get any engagement or any interaction in the slightest, so that's fun. But you wanna know what is fun? My next piece of art actually got engagement. <laughs> One like. Did I get you getting told this looks like Family Guy? Oh my God, yes, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I think this is when I truly realized I might have been in over my head because these suck ass. You know when you can't tell a kindergartner that the thing they made was an affront to God, so you just say it's so creative? That's what everyone was doing to my art. I also learned the hard way that I had committed accidental plagiarism. I got told Brian looks like Agumon from Digimon and uh, uh, yeah, I can't argue that. So Brian needed an extreme makeover and fast. So I decided to change his color scheme to a bit more of a unique one with his predominant color being white now with orange still being in the mix just as his inner body pattern. I also gave him three spikes on his head and two main spikes on his shoulders alternating between white and orange. And this next image looks objectively so much better. In fact, if you put these two images next to each other, people might not be able to immediately recognize that it was made by the same person. I'm not gonna fact check this, so let's assume for the sake of the argument, I'm right. So after coming up with the new Brian and sharing him to the world to get no likes or engagement, I decided to make a bust image of Brian that I think looks pretty good. It's obviously not perfect, but I think with only two months experience with art, it's pretty dang good. Not to mention I got one retweet, which was from myself. So I realized very quickly that Twitter might not have been the best place to start this experiment. Mainly because Twitter was trying to blow up, which I was taking really well. Nothing's working. I have tried hashtags, but hashtags don't work. I have tried keywords. Keywords don't work. I have tried emotes because I heard that might work. It doesn't. This is so frustrating because I know how to market content at least a little bit. Like I know how to get the ball rolling just enough to where people can find it. 
but on Twitter because you know the fucking rat is doing it. <laughs> Kevin, I'm sorry. Dover recommended that I really get into the community and start interacting with my fellow peers, so I did exactly that. So I kept trying to post memes to make me look more legitimate, and I also replied to people's posts and engaged with them to make me seem very real. My replies got one like, a reply that said thank you, and that was it. So I had to pivot. I tried posting Germa memes, which seems to be an engagement cheat code, and that might have gotten patched when Elon bought Twitter. So to keep myself on track, I did a body study to help keep my art skills fresh, which I don't think I should show in this video because I accidentally gave Brian a crazy hot dog in his pants. But maybe that was the goal because this tweet had gotten the most engagement so far with two likes and a retweet. The retweet being from me and the likes being from a small furry artist in an account called <laughs> Censored Beta Safe Zone. So I was in good company. So lost, dazed, and confused, and with like no one following me, I decided to post my commission sheet in case someone organically found my account. However, my commission sheet was not perfect at first, and I needed some help. You need to change the top one to headshot commission, and then the bottom one to buzz commission, because longer buzz commission just sounds stupid. And also you need to change the, le the numbers, like the money amount from handwritten to typed, because that looks like a scam. I would not click on that. I decided to charge $5 for a bust and $10 for a half body, something I originally called a headshot, which is hilarious because they're the same thing. Anyways, I drew Brian on the Weezer cover with his shirt off, cause why not? And I got two likes from I think real people, which was nice for my ego, but it didn't matter for the experiment cause they didn't follow me. You wanna know who did follow me though? A small account that liked one of my tweets and then went inactive and then two porn bots. So essentially I was throwing my art into an echo chamber, hoping for someone to show up, which never happened. I tried branching out, retweeting a lot of art. I even made one of those funny Twitter memes, but it was about Aphex twins, so no one understood it. I posted these turtles I saw having sex at the zoo, but yet another banger went unnoticed, unseen, uncared for, unloved, forever forgotten, and I was miserable. I even tried participating in one of those Twitter artist trends where you quote tweet something with your best art, and that usually gets picked up in the algorithm, but this didn't work either. And just when I thought Twitter couldn't blow up any harder, Twitter is now X.com? I work on the Morbius video for two two days and you go and rebrand it to x.com, one of the most popular social medias ever, just cause? You wanna know what was great about the old Twitter logo? I can't believe I'm saying old. You could recognize it at any size. I can't fucking recognize this when it's upscale. I don't wanna call it too early, but I think I chose the worst month possible to do a Twitter experiment. <laughs> It was so bad, I made a Twitter meme about it, and like usual, my loyal fans did not interact with it. Which sucked because I branched out and I drew a shark for Shark Week that I think looks kinda cool, but neither post got any engagement, even though I posted it twice. I even drew something non-furry related and related it to the Travis Scott album that dropped that week, hoping the keyword of utopia would catch on, but not even God himself saw this image. I made one tweet that I was about to see Oppenheimer reusing Brian on fire, and I said, I'll update later how it goes. And I never followed up on that tweet, and I think if I didn't mention it in this video, no one would have ever known. <laughs> so the end of the month has gotten here, and I have made a grand total of no money. Mm. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Was my art that atrocious? I realized I had kept pretty much to myself outside of my mentor Dova, and I wasn't getting the feedback online. So I had to resort to showing off my art to my friends to get their constructive criticism. <laughs> you ready for the first piece of art? I originally started with this guy. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> We all stand somewhere. This, this looks like Mario porno fan art. <laughs> Why is he so, is he so jacked? What a hunk. Uh, um, I've been the aim for realistic. It's like if Family Guy made furries. It's almost like if Charizard was a frat boy. That's kind of the... <laughs> That's kind of the vibes I'm getting here. And then I changed the color scheme, and this is new Brian the Lizard. I love Brian. I what love happened him. to his abs? You got- you unjacked him! No, his abs still exist. No, uh -oh. So then I made a bust in the headshot, which if you don't know art terms- that's, Wait, like, that's not like- <laughs> Oh my god, this next one. This was not drawn to be an SFW. I just fucked up. I gave him a giant hot <laughs> dog. Dang, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Why is he packing? I like how he's like <laughs> doing my best and he's like kind of flexing a little bit. This is gonna sound a little wild, but that's not where my eyes are drawn to, okay? I'm just gonna be honest. He, he ain't got no muscle, but he got some meat, okay? <laughs> Do you love the art? No.
Thanks, guys. Now, like I briefly mentioned in the intro, the original plan for this video was to only do one month of the experiment on Twitter, but then I wouldn't have a video. So then I decided to extend this experiment into August, but on Instagram as well, which spoiler alert did significantly better. So if I have not mentioned it, uh, I chose the name Death Capsules because it's just cyanide, but fun. So I set that name up for Instagram and I posted my profile pic with similar hashtags. And this post actually got five likes and I actually got followers off rip. This was great because I already had a back catalog of art that I could just post as if I had just made it. I even posted a sketch page I did and I got seven likes. I even got a comment from someone real for once. Oh my goodness, within a week, Instagram is proving that they may in fact be better than Twitter this year. I even got to message some small artists and most of them were so nice and gave me some really nice words of encouragement. One artist couldn't believe that I'd only been digitally drawing for two months and that I was mad talented just for two months, which was nice, but they were also 16. Anyways, I posted my comm sheet and then got back to some new artwork because you must always keep improving. This image is cute right here because the random shards on his vest aren't actually random shards, it's actually Mercury Theory. I didn't know that. I even made this skunk and labeled it a five minute challenge, which was an outright lie. This took me 30 minutes and it's supposed to be a gecko. I will not take criticism. And I also made my first ever half body that I feel actually fairly good on. Like I look at this and I go, this is passable. If I saw this made by someone else, I wouldn't fawn over it, but I'd definitely be a little bit intrigued. I also love that the bots on Instagram found me too, because I posted some alts of the beachfront Brian post that I had made. And because I used hashtag new artists, the bots thought I was promoting an album. So they wrote DM on Capitol Records. What would this album even sound like? My guess is a mix of the chill vibes of Jimmy Buffett and the griminess of Griselda. Hey, yo, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Anyways, I kept posting and I made some dolphin looking bitch, which does not matter. But the two things that do matter is that this post got the most engagement out of anything I posted either Twitter or Instagram, which is very funny to me because it got 11 likes. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, for an artist that's just starting out with no promotion, that's awesome. But I came into this experiment trying to make money. <laughs> also, the other thing about this post is that a shirt says, I didn't know that you lied, which really reads like some r slash I'm 14 and this is deep type beat. Actually, it's just a direct callback to Mercury Theory again. <laughs> now I haven't really addressed it here, but while Instagram was doing great, I wanted to see if I could pull the comeback of the century and get engagement on Twitter. So I kept posting and I kept posting and I posted all my art at basically the same time and nothing fun fucking happen? If I tweeted bomb threats, would that change anything? I will say my dolphin image did get three likes, one of them being from me, but that's three likes on Twitter. That's almost a hundred. Back on Instagram, I posted a shift in art that I think might be the best piece of art I created in this entire experiment. This is Eric the shark because I love giving mythical creatures normal ass names. I even captioned it, say hi to Eric and one person did. Thank you furry underscore personas. I even made my final OC for this experiment, a black lizard named Reese that got eight likes. He wasn't as appreciated, but he still was loved loved on Instagram. However, he was not loved on Twitter where I also tweeted shit like I could post my credit card and my passport here and no one would fucking see it. I also posted my updated commission sheet by saying I'm open for commissions again, but I know I'm just screaming into a fucking ether here. Did you know two of my three followers are porn bots? That means 66.66% of my audience isn't real. How the fuck am I supposed to market to that dude? I'll draw your OC for fucking anything, please. I was having a great time. Anyways, the experiment was rapidly reaching the end and I still had not got in one commission. You know, the entire point of this video. <laughs> I had 64 followers on Instagram. My highest post on any social media was 11 likes. And I sure as shit wasn't receiving death threats, which might mean I have to leave this experiment a failure. It didn't help at all that I had to deal with all the bots in my DMs. I got a common commission scam in my DMs where some person who doesn't follow you DMs you and asks if you can draw a picture of their son's pet for them. It's always their kid's pet. They'll also gush about how good your art is without getting into any specifics. Like Mary Mary here wanted a full body with a yellow background and at least three pieces of her son's dog and said that they could only budget $200 for this. Mind you, the most expensive thing on my commission sheet is $10. So I kept trying to get Mary to answer which specific artwork jumped out at her. And after avoiding the question a few times, she finally caved and told me, I just like the artwork that made me jumped to you. Oh, thanks, Mary. I also got this DM from someone with a name I'm not even gonna try to pronounce, and they just sent me this ominous ass message. If you would like to have that, I would also like to have a relationship with you. And I just replied, hell yeah, brother, and they left me on scene. <laughs>
However, the true fight came out against a giant threat, a story of promise, betrayal, and it all came from my mortal enemy, Mark Williams. Mark had messaged me on August 19th at 6 p.m. and opened up with just the loveliest message. Greetings to you, my dear friend. When I saw your artworks, they are so amazing. Clap emoji. I love heart them so much, other heart. You are doing a great job. Nice to meet you. Will you mind selling to me as NFT? Now, red flags immediately went off, but I'm a small artist. I need all the interaction I can get. So I replied back and said it was nice to meet him too, but I don't know if I do NFTs, but I appreciate the gesture, which Mark got back to me almost in instantly and said, you don't know what NFT is. And I responded, do you? And Mark went at 2 a.m. Yes. <laughs> so Mark specifically sent me a few pieces of my artwork he liked and said, I want to buy them as NFT. I will buy each for 4.12 Ethereum, non-fungible token. They are digital asset that are traded with cryptocurrencies and are guided by smart contacts. NFTs are quite easy to make. I requires a well-taken picture registering on an NFT market and paying a little gas fee and listing it. That's all quick and easy. And I responded sick as fuck, bro, dude, I love them. How much ETH is that USD, dude? To which Mark replied is 6,900. $912 for each one. <laughs> Mark Williams is saying he'd pay upwards of almost $7,000 for this shit. <laughs> He's so nice. He's like Mr. Beast, but for furries. So we went on a dance routine of Mark trying to get me to go on a shady website, and I kept dancing around the subject by playing extremely naive, disguising it with a genuine I'm sorry, I'm very new to this. So I just kept writing okay, and he wrote, have you registered and mint your artwork? Then you have to found with Ethereum worth 0.27 ETH for the gas fee to enable you to upload your artworks into NFT so that I can purchase them and make payments to you immediately, okay? Gas fee? Forgive me if I sound dumb, like the gas for my car? What does that fee have to do with any of this? 0.27 ETH doesn't sound like much either. Is that 27 cents? I'm very unfamiliar, I will admit. That's the fee you pay to the platform to make your account to be active and also enable you to upload your artworks into the NFT platform for sale so that I can purchase them and make payments to you immediately, okay? And then I crumble at any authority, so I just wrote, okay. Do you know how to purchase Ethereum on your crypto wallet? I don't think so. Send the screenshot of your wallet for directions on how to purchase Ethereum and fund your gas fees to enable you upload. Okay, here it is. And I didn't attach shit, to which Mark was immediately on my ass. I can't see what you sent. <laughs> Weird, I can see it. You can't? I don't understand you anymore. Don't you want to sell? Don't you want to buy? Have you uploaded? <laughs> He just keeps trying to steer it back to me uploading it so he can scam me. What made my art jump out at you? You know, I'm really trying to get him to answer. And you know, I really got to him. I want to purchase them because I love the colors and the designs. And I wrote, thank you so much. And Mark immediately got back into it. Can you follow procedures and upload for me to purchase? So I didn't know what to do. He was not fucking budging. I was not budging. So I sent him, okay, so I was in the middle of uploading and minting. Then the local mall exploded. I have no power. What the fuck? And then he did not reply. So I left him a heartfelt message. Mark, I just wanted to say I appreciate you and your patience this past month on trying to help me with this NFT thing. It means the world that someone is interested in my art. Enough to pay $6,912 for it, especially when I've just started two months ago. Having to try to guide me, someone who has had every surgery this week, through this has shown your patience, your resolve, and your kindness. Thank you for everything, Mark Williams. You've shown me true hope and the fact that I can legally say for my video that I made $6,000. Thank you! But then he got pissed. That's all right. You didn't want to sell to me. You were just wasting my time for nothing. Mark, with all due respect, you have never followed me, interacted with any of my posts, and have yet to prove you are the real deal yourself. We can all walk away agreeing that we played a beautiful game. It's all right. Have a nice day. One last thing, though. Can you say how much you would have paid in USD? I'm just curious. It's about $4.05 USD. $6,912 down to $4. Master negotiator. I mean, Ethereum is 405. It seems you don't understand English of Ethereum. And I wrote, bro said the English of Ethereum. You are a fool. <laughs> And then he deleted his account. So with Mark out of the picture and my $6,912 that went down to $4 being ripped out of my hands, it was the last week of the experiment and I'd realized I was not gonna get a commission, fuck! Meaning that I was gonna finally fail one of my experiments, which I'm not doing now. But then it hit me. I realized I had an ace in the hole. You remember my friend Sorexo who taught me anatomy all the way at the beginning of this video? I had not shown them any of my digital art yet, so they had no idea what it looked like. So I asked them if they would be okay doing another video call to go over my work, but I also threw out a Hail Mary, a very depressing Hail Mary. I straight up asked them if they would be okay buying a commission for me so I would pass the experiment. So the fate of my video was in their hands and I was on the edge of my seat. Was I a fraud? Had I wasted my entire summer on this video? Is this video gonna get like 400 views max? All questions I had, and then I got a message. 
Yahoo. Since Sorexa had no furry characters of their own, let alone any scalies, they decided to commission a bust image of the popular Pokemon Zalazzle, the girl boss of Pokemon. The specific parameters were bust image, Zalazzle, and her winking. All my training, all my practice had come to this. Guys, I have good news. My cat may have died, but at least I got a commission ordered. Yeah! So I booted up Krita and started drawing, knowing I could not disappoint my first and last client ever. So I pulled up some reference photos and I got to work, spending an hour and a half perfecting an image that will be long forgotten the second you scroll past it on Instagram. And when I finally finished the commission, I had never felt happier. But I realized I still had to impress not only my first client, but my mentor as well. Would I impress them and be the talk of the town? Or would I lose my good friend's respect forever after making and posting cringe? There was only one way to find out. So we hopped on a call and I showed them. You spent five buckaroonies on this. How excited are you to see your Zalazzle commission? Extremely excited. Here we go. <laughs> Open wide. Here's Zalazzle. Oh my God. <laughs> there she is. She's real. Oh my God. It even says first ever commission in the corner. It does. It's so cute. How do you feel? She's just as great as I remember her. Don't stop now. Like, I mean, like it, you literally started from scratch to make that much progress in such a short amount of time. It's really cool to see, you know? Oh my god, thank you. It's safe to say that they loved the piece and did not regret their purchase in the slightest, which means I won the experiment and I officially profited from this video. Fuck you! Mind you, I only profited because I borrowed my sister's drawing tablet and I uh, I didn't buy it, plus Creed is free. So I am $5 richer than I was four months ago, and yes, those are unprecedented profit margins. Get bitched! Oh, quickly, editing Tony here. It is actually 5, 10 p.m. the day this video drops. I actually got three pieces of fan art of Brian the Lizard. I almost forgot to add this in. So on the last day of the experiment, Dova gifted me this fan art and I, I love this so much. Dude, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. He just, he looks like a goober. Uh, then Sorexa, who doesn't even draw furry art like that. Brian the Lizard got them out of an art block and we've been saying Brian heals all the entire making of this video since then. It's been really funny. And also I spoke to Kasu again because Kasu wanted to see all my art. I showed it to them and then he said that, oh my God, I love Brian. I'm going to draw fan art when I get home. And I'm like, Haha, okay, that's cool. Like thinking like he probably won't do it. And then two days later, he sends this. What the hell, man? So shout out furries. <laughs> So now that we're finally at the end of this huge monstrous video that I've been teasing for about six months now, what can I take away from this? Well, I've learned even more so than I already believed that making good furry art is difficult. Not only that, drawing in general is difficult. In fact, drawing is one of the skills I've wanted to have in my entire life, but I've never had the patience to really pursue learning. This is frustrating me because I've taught myself video editing, I've taught myself music production, I've been learning Spanish for about a year now. I have the drive and discipline to learn these things, but I can't get it to train translate into the medium of drawing. I believe it's something about art being such a visual medium at its core that takes real time to make something of high quality and of high standard. And not being able to produce something to that standard for at least a year really deters me from wanting to set all my time to it. I think that's why I committed so hard to doing this video in the experiment phase. I finally had a reason to learn. I finally had an incentive. And the most important aspect, I thought it was funny. <laughs> so even though my artwork still isn't anything to really scoff at, I am genuinely really proud of myself for what I was able to do here. You can see a genuine layer of progression and me getting better at art each day. I've also learned even more so than I already believed that furries are severely overhated. Almost every single furry I talked to during the making of this video has been nothing but extremely kind, understanding, and supportive to me. Sure, some of them might make explicit art and there might be some people in the community who will spend a hundred grand on people building buildings. I'm still not over that. But what community is it without its extremes? I also know in the comments, there's going to be some 14 year old edge lords in the comments of this video saying that they hate furries and that they should all eat dirt and die. If you take anything away from this video, take how people react to furries as a litmus test. If they're extremely against it, they are most likely racist. If they are extremely for it, they are either insane or very, very cuddly. There's no in between. There's no in between. And if they're kind of in the middle or indifferent, they're probably chill. So after four months of practicing and releasing art to the public, I can now say officially to the question, how much money can you make from furry art? If you have an established audience, a consistent output and quality art, you could probably make quite a bit. But if you're completely new to the whole art world with no connections and are trying to make furry art with the sole purpose of making a ton of money, you are going to be so disappointed. <laughs> but hey, maybe you get lucky like I did and you walk away with a crisp $5 bill. 
which means I made a dollar and 25 cents per month. So dinner's on me, bitches. Yeah. Oh my God, we're finally to the end. But before you go, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to help me in my quest to go from underrated to just rated. And don't forget to politely press that like button as it's been obliterated too many times. There'll be some videos that pop up by my head because if you like this one, you'll certainly like a lot of the other ones. And also I'm gonna be posting a lot more consistently this year where I'm gonna be posting on the first Friday of every month. And if I post this on April 5th, that means I actually did it, which means hopefully you'll see me in May. If not, I am in college. <laughs> so until then, I'm gonna go take a long nap until I get back, Kevin's in charge. Kevin. I don't know what a fursona is, but all I know is I have a new pet named Banana. Banana, 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 banana. Na 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 na